Mm -hmm. Would you look at that? Looks like we're alive. How about that? Hello, everyone. And welcome to yet another sorting session. How about that? So let's make a little bit of an announcement in our Discord server and uh, let's continue development. Uh, live on Twitch, right? So, and what we're doing uh, today is uh, making a compiler. Specifically, making a compiler without LLVM in 2021, keg W. That's the topic of today's stream. Uh, and let's ping everyone who's interested in this specific session. And uh, yeah, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, so, let's take a look at what we've been developing for. Uh, for the past several streams, I would say, we've been developing this wacky language called Porth. Um, you can find the source code in the description if you're watching on YouTube, so I usually maintain uh, things to put in the description, so yeah, you can find it in here. Uh, hello, I good Duke, welcome, welcome to the stream. So you can find this thing in here, and I think I've made uh, a little bit of changes off screen. I've been coding off screen a little bit, I'm really sorry about that. So, uh, merge origin master. So, yeah, I actually implemented a little bit better like test system. Now we have a bunch of tests and stuff like that. And um, yeah, the language is stack based. It's a stack based language and it kind of looks like fourth. If you ever heard of fourth, you may find this language rather interesting. So, uh, fourth. So fourth programming language, um, just in case you're interested in this kind of stuff, I'm going to put it in the description. Um, fourth programming language. It's kind of like that, but it's not really. It's not a re-implementation of fourth. It's more of a, like, it's inspired by fourth plus some other things that I've seen in other languages and systems. So it's, that's roughly the idea, right? It's not really fourth, but it's uh, heavily inspired by fourth. Hello, Sufian69, uh, Mana Soima. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Um, so, and yeah, this is basically a simple program that uh, prints numbers from 0 to 99, right? So yeah, every time you see a number, it pushes that number on a data stack. There's a thing called data stack. And uh, then consequent operations do some different things on that data stack. And this is the uh, construction that basically loops uh, until um, this number becomes equal or greater than this one and constantly prints the current number. So, and what's cool about this language is that it's interpreted. You can go ahead and just simulate uh, the example. Uh, let me try to do that. Ah, it doesn't fit in, in the screen. But anyway, uh, here is the simulation right, of our nation. And at any point, you can go ahead and compile it. It's compiled and it compiles to native code. Uh, right. If I go to here, uh, as you can see, uh, so here is the source code. But here is assembly that was generated by our compiler. And if we take a look at the assembly file, right, uh, you will see that it's a legitimate assembly that got generated by our compiler. Uh, so, and then uh, it got compiled into the executable file. As you can see, it's elf 64 bit executable, statically linked, by the way. It doesn't depend on anything at all, right? And if you try to run this executable, it, um, well, it's not set, it's sec. It will print uh, 100 numbers. So as you can see, it works. It's, uh, you know, compiled. It's not statically typed yet, uh, but I will plan to make it statically typed. Um, so hello, hello everyone who just joined. So, and what's interesting is that I think in a previous stream, we added support for um, arbitrary access to the memory. I think that's what we did. Hello, Shadran. Hello, hello. Hello, Eddie C. Snakes. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. How are you guys doing? Hello, come on back. So, yeah, I, I maintain a playlist of all of the series of this uh, Porth development, so you can find it on Sodding Daily channel. Sodding Daily, and if you're watching on Twitch, uh, you can find this channel in here in the chat. Is it written in Python? Yes, the compiler and interpreter is written in Python completely. Uh, and the reason is because why not? <laughs> Right. The, the choice of language uh, is completely arbitrary because I do plan to make this language self-hosted, right? So there are some plans to make this entire thing completely self-hosted and self-hosted means that the language is implemented in itself. 
So what I want to do, I want to implement uh, like enough functionality of this language in Python. So then later I can re-implement the language in itself and get rid of Python. So eventually we're going to get rid of Python. And the only reminder about this thing written in Python would be the name of the language, which is Porth, right? So the reason why it's called Porth, it's basically forced, but in Python, right? So that's basically the idea, right? Cheers, by the way. And yeah, so I'm maintaining the playlist of the development of this language. Uh, you can find it on this channel. And uh, yeah, here is the playlist. I'm going to put it in the description. Uh, so where is my description? Mm, fourth development playlist. You can find it in here if you're interested. In a previous stream, in a previous stream, we added support for arbitrary memory access, right? So now you can uh, access memory arbitrarily. So I think there are some tests to test this ability to do so. So essentially, we have a special uh, word uh, called mem, uh, which pushes the pointer to the beginning of the uh, memory pool, or rather like a memory heap to um, yeah, pointer to the beginning of the memory heap to the stack. And then you can do manipulations on that pointer and you can write and read from that memory and do some different things. And we also did support for syscalls. So you can interact with the operating system through this language. So essentially what we're doing in here, we're just filling up the memory with characters like A, B, C, right? So this thing uh, puts A into the beginning of the memory. This thing puts B to the next cell after the beginning and so on and so forth. And then this thing just prints A, B, C. And then we iterate through ABC and increment and making it BCD and also print it. Right, so this is what our language is capable of. And I think that should be enough to make language Turing complete. Um, hello, Parademi. Hello, Bitstream. Hello, Calvaria. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. So, and uh, if you don't know what is a Turing completeness, I, personally, I don't know what is Turing completeness either. Uh, so, but I heard that Turing completeness makes a language a proper programming language, right? So, if your language is not Turing complete, it's not a proper programming language. That's usually um, how people understand Turing completeness, I suppose. Uh, Turing completeness. Uh, so Turing completeness. If you're interested about Turing completeness, you can Google it up. Uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube, by the way, from a computer file that explain Turing completeness. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna leave the, the, the link into this thing in the description. And the way I usually demonstrate the Turing completeness of my languages or my systems is by implementing uh, a thing called Rule 110. Right, rule 110. And rule 110 is cellular automaton. Uh, right. So it's a one dimensional cellular automaton um, that is proven to be Turing complete, is known to be Turing complete. And if you can implement a rule 110 in your language, you sort of demonstrated that uh, your language is Turing complete, right? It's, that's the easiest way to demonstrate that. And I think this is precisely what we're going to be doing today. We're going to try to see if it is possible to implement rule 110 in our language, right? So this is a rule 110. That's what we're doing today. Uh, yeah, obligatory rule 34 joke. Yes, yes. So we're going to implement rule 34 in um, in Porth, of course. That's what we're going to be doing today. Mm. So rule 110, how I usually implement rule 110? Okay, so here's the thing. This is how it starts. So you have a bunch of cells, right? And uh, cells could be in two different states. They can be uh, alive or dead. Right. And uh, you have a, a row of these cells, uh, which is the current generation. And you compute the next generation by iterating through uh, through the entire row uh, with the window of three cells. You see here is the rolling window, right? And it rolls through the entire row uh, by three. And uh, basically what it does, it looks up different patterns, right? If a, uh, the row of three cells matches a particular pattern, the next cell in the, in the, in the center is going to be that one, right? You see, so there's like a lookup substitution table. And you iterate through the entire row, making the substitution, and you compute it. Uh, the next generation of rows. Uh, and uh, that will eventually generate uh, the patterns that look like this. 
Uh, let's actually take a closer look. I wonder uh, if we can do that. So each individual row of pixel here is a one generation and it should generate this like triangular patterns and stuff like that. So, and it starts from the top and it just grows downwards, right? So, and the encoding is probably completely broken because of that. So I really apologize for the encoding. Uh, I saw you rule one one all stream from yeah, yeah, yeah. So I already like developed a programming language before. Uh, which is called Bang. Uh, I actually paused the development of that thing, and I think uh, I also used rule 110 to demonstrate its Turing completeness. Uh, so, Turing daily, Turing complete. I think you can find. Yeah, proof that my language is Turing complete. So, I demonstrated Turing completeness uh, of Bang um, in this video. Right, and you can find, find it in here. Uh, Turing completeness for bang, right? And the usual way I implement the um, rule 110 is by having a table, right? So I have a, some sort of substitution table, uh, which consists of like eight, um, eight cells for each individual pattern. And as you can see, this pattern can be represented as um, a bit mask right and this set of bit masks is full meaning that uh, there's all possible combinations of zeros and ones in here so you can basically encode a single mask as an index within this table right so uh, specifically pattern 000 can be stored right can be stored at index zero right so pattern 001 can be stored at index one and this is one uh, pattern uh, 010 can be stored at index two and so on and so forth you see so since it's a full set of um, you know of bit masks you can treat them as indices so I usually initialize the table like this and then I have two sets of boards right I have some sort of like a board capacity so this is the maximum length of the board and essentially I treat one board as the current one and another one the opposite one as the next one and I iterate for, uh, through the current board and com compute the next one and on the next iteration I see swap them out and continue iterating and computing the next generations and just printing them. So what's interesting is, is that I feel like um, having two boards is kind of redundant because I feel like since you're maintaining like a small window, you can basically get rid of one board and only maintain the state of the current window uh, to save up some memory and simplify implementation. And I do really want to simplify implementation because I'm going to be implementing that in a very scuffed, unfinished language. So I want to... <laughs> uh, you know, simplify myself, uh, my life, right? So I, I want to make it as simple as possible. So it's easy to implement in Porth and still demonstrate that it's Turing complete. So, and because of that, I want to try to implement rule 110 in C uh, as I usually implement it and then see how I can get rid of the second board, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, get rid of the second board and see if I can like simplify the entire thing. And then once I uh, nail it down, uh, we can go ahead and, uh, you know, um, implement it in both. Sounds good. Sounds Gucci. Sounds to my Gucci. Um, there's no link in Discord, somebody says. Um, okay, so I guess I forgot the link. Okay, let's actually quickly fix that. Uh, to, 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 to. Okay, so this is going to be https twitch.tv slash todding. Don't forget to follow me there if you're watching that on YouTube. If you want to see this kind of stuff for life. All right, so let's go ahead and implement this entire shit. So this is going to be port. And you know what? I think I'm going to be uh, changing my, um, you know, title, right? So I'm going to change it to uh, rule uh, 110 in C, right? Rule 110 in C. And then after we're done with rule 110 in C, we're going to change it back, right? Because I don't want to confuse people. People will be coming to uh, compile a stream and they will see me implementing rule 110. That is confusing. That is frustrating. We don't want to frustrate people. Uh, all right, so let's implement this shit in C. So this is going to be C and mm, two, 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 two. this is going to be a return and let's implement the hello world, right? 
so here is hello world uh, so do I want to have a make file I think I do want to have a make file because I want to enable shit ton of different flags so the flags we're gonna put in there is gonna be w o w extra uh, so the standard is going to be C11, we're going to be pedantic about the standard and we're going to enable all of the debug, uh, debugging information just in case. So leaps, we don't really need any leaps. Uh, okay, so this is going to be main, main C, 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 C flags, O, uh, main, main dot C, leaps, I think this should be enough uh, so let's try to recompile this entire thing and we implemented hello world it's nothing much but we already set ourselves for the success so we already have a working program it doesn't do what we want but we already have something uh, now we can start pushing it towards what we want it to do right so we can't push anything towards what you wanted to do if you have nothing to push if you know what i'm talking about membrilla amarilla Thank you so much for Hello, Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for eight months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Hello Club. Hello. Uh, Hello. Choose by the way. Um, it compiles and it even runs. Exactly. Uh, that's already better than 99.99% of the projects. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's implement the substitution table, right? So we're gonna have a bunch of patterns and we're gonna put them in, in the table, right? So this is gonna be a table and there will be eight patterns, right? We're gonna be using uh, designated initialization. So zero is gonna be zero. If I remember correctly, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, zero. Okay, so it starts with zero, then three ones, then zero, then two ones, and then zero. I think I can remember that. So this one is going to be uh, one, uh, one, one. This one is going to be zero. This one is going to be one, another one, and this one is going to be uh, zero. There we go. So we have a substitution table. So then we need to uh, define a bunch of boards. So uh, we're gonna have two of them and we're gonna have some sort of a board capacity, right? So, and board capacity is gonna be equal to something like 30, right? Um, okay, so all of that is gonna be static. Uh, the table, I think I also wanna make it static const because I don't plan to change it uh, over the execution. And the board is supposed to be zero initialized. I think if you mark something as static, it automatically makes it zero initialized. All right, so let's make a couple of uh, iteration, right? So we're going to be doing it like this, uh, right? So we're going to have 10 iterations. And on each iteration, we first need to print the current board. We're going to keep track of the current board uh, through a variable, something like current board. And initially, it's going to be zero. And um, what I want to do actually, uh, so in the board, I'm going to be storing values zero and one, zero indicating that the cell is dead and one indicated that the cell is alive. But I want to print this entire stuff as, um, you know, as characters, right? So I want to denote the dead cell as space and a live cell as asterisks or something, right? And uh, the easiest way to do that would be maybe put it into some sort of a buffer, but we can just iterate the current board if you know what i'm talking about so something like this so this is a board capacity right iterating the current board and uh if uh, board current board j so the j character of the current board is equal to zero we're gonna do f put c uh space to std out otherwise it's gonna be f put c uh, star and then at the end of this entire thing we're gonna do f put c new line to separate the generations okay so if i understand correctly now if i try to recompile this, the entire thing and print it it will print a bunch of spaces so we can't even see anything so it complains that a table is not used but that's totally fine that is totally fine uh so maybe it would be nice to initialize this entire thing with something uh, let's do uh, board current board uh, and let's put um, I don't know at zero something like one right so this is gonna be one 
uh, and maybe at the end of this entire thing. So this is going to be board capacity minus one and uh, there we go. So as you can see here are the spaces and it just printed this entire thing like 10 times. Cool. I think we can simplify this entire stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. Because if it's a zero, it's one thing. If it's one, it's another. We can use it as an index in some sort of like a character table, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, so we can do something like static const, and um, this could be, I don't know, display table, right? Display table, and there will be two characters in here. The first one is going to be space, the second one is going to be that. And uh, what essentially I can do, I can get rid of the branching completely uh, and just do display table um, uh, board, current board, like so. And that should be enough, actually, right? So we have a substitution table in here. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. And you know what? I think we can even... Uh, let's actually make it like a const char. We can make it some sort of like a string. I think we can even make it like that. Yeah. And another interesting thing, can, can I just like, you know, inline the string in here? <laughs> Is that something I can do? I, I can do that. Okay, so we just inline the string in here. <laughs> All right, so I still have memories of my obfuscated, obfuscated hello words, right? So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Got obfuscation. <laughs> is it too obfuscated? I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it is too obfuscated. Hello, RDB42. Hello, Jenny Most. Flasha. Hello, hello. Mm, hello, hello, everyone. So we're just obfuscating code as usual. <clears throat> <sighs> All right, so uh, we know how to print the current thing, right? We know how to print the current thing. And now what I want to do, I want to compute the next state. Um, the next state of the board. So I'm thinking how, what would be the best way to do that? Uh, because at the beginning, right, you have to... So we have a bunch of things. And you iterate with a uh, window of three, right? And the window of three actually substitutes uh, sort of the middle one, right? It substitutes the middle one, right? So for these three, I decide this one. But what if I want to decide for this one? I only have two to work with, right? So I need to decide what we're doing on the edges. Uh, the easiest solution is to actually maybe ignore the edges and only iterate, uh, basically ignore this cell, right? So only iterate by three and this one is going to be sort of like a dead zone, uh, right? And correspondingly, this one uh, is also going to be like a dead zone because you don't have three in here, right? We only have three in here. Um, so this is one of the ways to do that. So this is the dead zone. And because of that, uh, I think we can iterate starting from one and less than board capacity minus one. Right. Something like this. Uh, I usually do it like that because it's just like easier to, to work with. Um, okay, so now we need to get the three um, characters, right? The three characters. So the first character is J minus one. The second one is J, and the third one is J plus one, and we need to turn them into um, into a, an index in, in the table, right? So we need to turn it into the uh, index in this table. So uh, let's actually assign them to uh, some sort of variables A, B, and C, and the index in the index let's call it pattern is going to be something like A uh, or B. Uh, yeah, or C. C is implicitly sort of shifted by zero, right? So, and this is how we combine everything into, into like a pattern. And then we can look up uh, that pattern in the table, and this is precisely what we have to put into the next board, right? Into the next board for the jth, jth, for, for the jth character. So the problem here is that we don't know what is the next board, right? So here's the thing, if the current board is zero, the next board has to be one. 
If the current board is one, the next one is, has to be zero. So the easiest way to compute that is just take one and subtract current board. So that way, if current board is zero, the next one is gonna be one. If the current board is one, the next one is gonna be zero. So you see, we all always like computing for the opposite boards. Um, all right. And uh, this is how we compute the next generation. And then after we were done, we're saying that the current board is the next board. And we sort of like flip-flopping between the ports. Uh, so that's essentially what we're doing. And let's see if it's doing anything. Uh, at, that's already looks like, you know, the triangular pattern of rule 110. Uh, so because of the dead zone, it kind of like creates that flip-flop thingy. And as far as I know, the usual implementation of rule 110 grows from right to left for whatever reason uh michael chef i hope i pronounced your name correctly thank you so much for two months of tier one subscription hello hello hi uh hi michael uh, thank you thank you so much and welcome to our epic rule one one oh club how are you guys doing cheers by the way so we almost implemented rule one one oh mm -mm. So, alrighty. Um, usually it grows from right to left. So it is better to just like seed this entire thing like here and it will generate like this triangle. Okay, so we can actually put a little bit like more uh, generations in here, like hundreds of them. And as you can see, it grows um, and then it starts like repeating itself and it just goes into a case of some sort. Uh, so we can actually make the amount of iterations equal to the board capacity so that way it will always that's kind of interesting i would expect it to be like a proper triangle but there's two extra rows oh there are extra rows because we have two dead zones on the left and the right so that means we have to iterate like minus two i see i see and now it's it's a proper proper triangle and that way if we in increase the size of the board uh we're gonna have like bigger uh you know rule 110 like pattern there we go so that's pretty cool actually Mm, prove that C is Turing complete. Yeah, we just proved that C is Turing complete. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, I really like that. So it's kind of funny, like, for some reason, rule 110 specifically grows from right to left. Right? It specifically grows from right to left. And if you try to seed it from, let's say, uh, 1, right? If you put, like, a character, like, at, at, at the beginning from left to right, it's not going to grow uh right there we go it's just like stands still uh so if you want your rule one one to grow um you have to do that from right to left for whatever reason and even in wikipedia it also grows from right to left uh so maybe you can make it grow from left to right by changing the substitution table um somehow i don't know how though um maybe by making it sort of like this i wonder uh, nah, it doesn't really change it much, but I mean, I don't really care much, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so yeah, that, that seems to be working, that seems to be working. Okay, so uh, what we can do... Mm -mm -mm -mm. So first thing we can do, by the way, we can replace this table... Um, we can replace this table with a single number. You see, we have eight bits in here and that fits into one byte. So the entire table actually fits into entire byte. And maybe we can use the pattern as an amount of bit shifts that we have to make to find the next pattern. So this is one of the simplification that I can see for this entire stuff. So let's actually try to do that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, if I go to the Python and so the entire table is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, okay, so that's kind of... Oh, we have to actually do that in a different order, right? So it starts because we can only access the, the rightmost bits. So the actual table has to be something like... Um, zero one one zero one 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 zero okay so this is the table and even in decimal it kind of looks like binary which is kind of interesting right so um yeah so we can try to replace this entire thing with just uh that right so this is going to be our table 
and in here we can replace this entire thing like so uh so mm -mm -mm. so this is the pattern right so this is the pattern i ship that that pattern and i suppose after that uh, i have to take like one bit out of it right and that way uh nothing changed i think Oh yeah, okay, so that's really interesting. So we, we managed to compress the whole table into a single number. And since we're using the table only in a single place, I think I can just straight up inline this table, can I? Okay, so you don't need any array for the table. That already simplifies uh, a lot of stuff. So this is actually quite cool because uh, now I don't need to allocate memory for that table in the fourth program. Right, so I, I want to implement this stuff in port, and now I don't have to worry about allocating the memory for the uh, for this entire table, which is kind of nice, right? So if we manage to get rid of one board in here, it will become even simpler. Uh, given we don't have bit shifts, right? We don't really have bit shifts, uh, but we can implement bit shifts for uh, for the for the port, right? So um, essentially, if we don't have some operations for the, for port, we can just implement them and then implement uh, rule one one zero. Um, so the next one is going to be what? We need to have some sort of like a rolling window. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, so we can basically use uh, this as a window. All right, well, let's actually imagine uh, that we don't have two boards anymore, right? We don't have two boards anymore, and let's just try to compile the entire thing. So yeah, there's no such thing as a current board. Remove that, and of course, we're gonna remove that. Uh, maybe we don't even need this comment anymore. Uh, so there's no such thing as a current board, fuck that. And uh, there's no such thing as the next board, but Instead of the next board, we're gonna have a window of three elements. And inside of that window, we're gonna be... Um, let me see, let me see. Or maybe, you know what? Since it's only three elements, I can do the following thing. I can just put A, B, C in here, right? And the first one is gonna be zero, one, uh, and two. Okay, so zero, one, and two. And then I prepare a pattern out of that, out of that uh, and then I shift everything. And the next thing I need to do, I need to sort of shift um, the ABC buffer. So ABC buffer becomes the the ring buffer of some of some sort, right? So essentially, A will become B, uh, right? B will become C, and C will become board um, we don't uh, don't have the next board anymore so we have uh, j minus one j j plus one and we need to do j plus two right we need to do j plus two uh, so that way we sort of have this window rolling window in abc and we keep rolling and keep computing the next state uh, so that should kind of work and that simplifies this stuff even further uh, right so we don't have the well yeah, yeah so we don't have to keep track of that stuff is that the same thing by the way it looks the same but I'm not sure if that's the same thing um, I should have actually saved the output of the previous one let me actually do that single uh, buffer txt so here is a single buffer I saved it into a file and then I'm gonna let me actually do that a little bit like this. There we go. And I'm gonna actually go back in my implementation, right? And I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna actually get rid of all of that. Uh, luckily, I have an infinite history, right? So I can just literally go back in history uh, and just bring it back. Uh, I think that is it. Uh, and there we go. So this has to be. Uh, so this is a single buffer, and this is the double buffer txt. Uh, there we go. So we have a single buffer and double buffer. And I want to take a look at the difference between them. So a single buffer and double buffer. And there is no div between them. Um, uh, to, to access in board uh, when j is board minus 1 is a bit sus. Are you sure about that? 
uh, are you sure about that? It's actually less than board minus one. Right, so that means J uh, can be at max equal to board cap minus two. And when you do plus two, right, you're accessing board, uh, well, yeah, you're accessing something like this. So it's kind of dangerous, actually. Uh, it is, in fact, kind of dangerous. So we'll have to do something about that. On the last iteration, thank you, thank you so much. You see, this is the uh, unsafe, a very unsafe language, right? So uh, we have to be super careful with this kind of stuff. So, uh, okay, let's, let's go back to uh, a single buffer, right? Let's go back to a single buffer. And uh, well, apparently, yeah, we can actually replace this stuff with, um, you know, with a single buffer and a rolling window, uh, which is actually kind of cool. Really like that. Um, so this is gonna be something like this. This is another one, another one. And um, okay, so we already established that we wanna put this thing in here. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so I'm gonna actually put it like that. This is gonna be zero, one, uh, two. Word uh, next is. Uh, like this, and uh, what do we have? Mm -mm -mm -mm. A become B, uh, B becomes C, and C becomes board J plus 2, right? And that is very dangerous. Uh, the only way we should do that if, um, I don't know, J plus 2 is less than board capacity, right? So only then we want to do this kind of stuff, uh, because it's kind of dangerous. <clears throat> It is, in fact, kind of dangerous. Uh, alrighty. Um, uh, let's try to recompile the entire thing. Uh, and we don't have a next board anymore. And it complains about something. Yeah, we don't have a current board. And, yep, it does do rule 110. Alright. And here is another interesting thing. A, B, and C, they actually store either zero or one, which means, can we maintain this window as a beat mask? I think, I think we should be able to. So uh, can you do something like uh, board, um, like one, two, um, it's actually not one, it's gonna be two, or uh, board one, or, board 2. Right, so here is the window. Right, and that way, this is literally pattern, actually. So, okay. Uh, we don't have to compute that anymore. And now what we have to do, we have to shift that pattern um, to the right and merge it with the next board in here. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so I do pattern. Uh, move it to the to the right, but here is the interesting thing. We need to uh, basically mask it with the last three bits, right? With the last three bits, and uh, so what is one one one? Uh, let me see zero uh, B one one one. It's actually seven, which is nice. So I can do uh, I shift it to the right, then I do and seven, and then uh, I merge it with the board plus one. Right, and this is the next pattern. This is the next pattern. There we go. So I think we can do do it like that. Uh, mm, mm -mm. All right. So and it doesn't compile because it's semicolon and it works. That's very really interesting. So we got rid of the table and we get rid of the second board and we just like use bit operations. So that sounds like something that is relatively easy to implement in our language, I think. What do you think? Mm -mm. So I would like to also somehow get rid of G plus two thingy. I think it's kind of annoying. But it is who it is, and it isn't who it isn't. Um, to, 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 to. Top tier manipulation skills. Maybe. Uh, to, 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 to. So what I'm thinking is that you can get rid of this condition 
if you move pattern shifting to the beginning of the iteration. So essentially, um, we're going to only start from this, right? We only take first two, uh, right? Zero and one, right? So this is the zero and this is a one. And then uh, instead of doing J plus two, we can do J plus one, but at the beginning of the iteration. That way we don't have to check this condition. You see, so the next bit is going to be rolled in uh, on the beginning of the next iteration and yeah, so since the board capacity at max can be minus two, uh, we're going to add plus one is going to be at max uh, board minus one, which is within the range. So yep, I think that way we can get rid of that condition. I think that's a pretty good solution to, see, to this. Mm, to, 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 to. I really like that actually. I really like that. What do you guys think? Is that, a, is that a good solution? So this is as simple as I can get it. Like, can you get it even simpler? I don't think so. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -mm. Okay, and it seems to be working still. I hope I recompile. So let me actually double check that I'm recompiling my, uh, my application. And uh, there we go. So that should be relatively easy to implement in Porth. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so do you guys want this source code for, for anything? Uh, I can upload it to GIST or something if you want to play with it. So, um, yeah, looks like a pretty good thing. I'm going to upload it also for, for people on YouTube. Maybe somebody who's watching on YouTube want to play with this thing as well. <sighs> All right. So rule 110.c. Mm -mm -mm. So, and here is my implementation of rule 110 in C, a simplified like sort of version of it. And unfortunately, I cannot see the submit button because it's behind my camera, right? So uh, I have to do something like this. And now I can see create a uh, gist. So let's create a secret gist. And here is the implementation of the rule 110 that takes only one, you know, buffer, which contains the board. Uh, you can find it here in the chat if you're watching live or if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put it in the description, All right? So, uh, rule 110 in C, there we go. Mm, okay, so that's pretty cool. So, I should have actually tried to simplify this thing uh, way back when I was doing rule 110 for Bang, because for Bang I implemented that cucumber some implementation with a table with the double boards and stuff like that this one is actually super easy <laughs> so this is kind of this is kind of cool i like that hmm. uh, unfortunately in uh in Porth we don't have this kind of things we don't have like constants and we'll have to hard code and copy paste a lot of stuff but it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't uh, all right, so uh, I think we're done with the uh, C programming and I need to go back to the port programming, right? Making compiler without LLVM and there we go. All right, let's take a look at this stuff. Uh, do you guys have any questions maybe uh, so far? Is everything clear what we're trying to achieve today? And, you know, as usual, um, so we have a couple of examples in here. I'm thinking, so let's actually remove some stuff. Uh, double buffer. Mm -hmm. uh, rule 110 port. Uh, okay. So recently I implemented uh, a couple of um, operations for port off screen. One of them is to dupe. Right. The thing about dupe is that it duplicates whatever it has on the stack, right? If you have like 69 on the stack, you can duplicate that thing and you can print it twice, right? Because dump takes whatever at the top of the stack and it prints it and removes it from the stack, right? So if you want to print uh, 69 uh, two times, you, you have to duplicate it, right? Before you print it. So, and if you try to interpret this entire thing, uh, let's simulate room 11. Oh, there we go. It printed it uh, two times. If you don't duplicate it, I think you're going to have a stack under flow right so uh, we're doing simulation that's why it, it throws um, an exception in Python we can try to do compilation I think in case of a compilation it will basically suck fault 
It didn't even set fault, right? It printed one, essentially meaning that it was basically printing garbage from the stack. Yeah, it, it, it literally printed garbage from the stack. Uh, so this language is unsafe, by the way, right? So uh, people who program in Rust, please look away. This is unsafe language. Yet. We're going to make it safe in the future. Don't worry about it. Cheers, by the way. Mm -mm -mm. Um... Argument counter. Yeah, it could be an argument counter. We're literally using the uh, the stack uh, of the application, you know, the actual stack. So, and as far as I know, the arguments of the program are passed via the stack. So this could be the argument, uh, the argument counter. This is actually very interesting. So what if we do dump dump? The first thing has to be argument counter. And the second thing should be a pointer to the beginning of the argv, right? So let's actually try to do that. Uh, this does in fact look like a fucking pointer. Oh my god, I was thinking how can I have an access to the uh, to the command line arguments and ports? And I was thinking how I'm going to be implementing all of that. Maybe I don't even have to implement that. It's already implemented accidentally. To be named your genius. Holy shit. <laughs> oh! Wait a second, uh, if I provide more arguments to this thing, uh, wait, uh, so this is uh, rule 110, right, foo, there we go, it, yeah, it is actually the counter, holy shit, this is so cool, <laughs> I really love that. We don't have to implement anything. It just works. Like I mean, it doesn't work in a in a simulation mode because simulation mode is not aware of that. Uh, but yeah, I'll think about that. Yeah, it's an unintended feature, right? So that's the beauty of unsaved languages. You get these awesome unintended features. Isn't that exciting? I think it's goddamn fucking exciting. Who needs to program in Rust? Am I right? You don't have any accidental features. Uh, Mm -mm. That's actually very cool. So and this is a pointer. This is a pointer. Anyway, so what I was talking about... Oh, yeah. So uh, we have dupe, and it duplicates the thing on the top of the stack, right? So and 2 dupe uh, actually duplicates a pair of the elements on top of the stack. Right, if you have 69 for 20, uh, right, you, two, you do 2 dupe, and it will literally take these two pairs, right? Uh, and just duplicate it like that, which makes one thing super convenient. Imagine that you have an upper bound for a counter, like 30, and the counter, which starts from zero. And then you want to organize the, the loop from zero to 30. You do while, you duplicate pair of the elements, and you say while zero is less than 30, and you do duplicate dump. Uh, right, duplicate dump, and uh, there you go. You organized sort of like a for loop, sort of speak. Um, you, you also have to, you know, uh, increment uh, whatever you have at the top of the stack, of course. Uh, you sort of organize the for loop from 0 to 30 quite easily. So, and if we try to uh, just run this entire thing, so it's uh, fourth simulate rule 110 fourth. Uh, there we go, it's bring it from, from 0 to like 30. So this is actually kind of convenient. And this could be our like outer loop of the generation, right? Um, so if you take a look at a rule 110, where is main.c? So this could be our outer loop, this one. Okay, cool. Um, so then we need to organize the inner loop, right? We need to organize the inner loop. Uh, An inner loop is going to be iterating, I suppose, the memory, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah. Hmm. Okay, so let's also organize this kind of thing. So while uh, to dupe like this, uh, and this is going to be the end. Um, so what I need to do, I need to dupli duplicate whatever we have on top of the stack. So this is a zero index. And then I want to add it to the beginning of the memory. So I have a pointer to the current sort of cell. 
The next thing I want to do, I want to read a character from that pointer, right? So, and what's interesting is that it can be either zero or one, which I then can use as a condition, right? So if it is uh, true, uh, I want to print asterisk, right? I want to print the asterisk. And what is the ASCII code of the asterisk? That's a good question. Uh, so I cannot just print a character, unfortunately. This is so sad. Uh, one thing I can do is I can put the character somewhere in the memory, maybe after the board, and just call the syscall right on that character. So this is one of the things I can do. Or, or maybe I can fill up the whole buffer. But filling up the whole buffer, you have to juggle with the pointers and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to do that. So let's take a look at the ASCII code for the asterisk, right? Uh, ASCII. Mm, so we don't have a character literals yet. Uh, so that's why I have to work with the, um, you know, with the um, direct ASCII codes. So here's an interesting thing, like I try to not overcomplicate the language and implement too many features because the more features I implement, the more difficult it will be to re-implement the language in itself, if you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of an interesting dilemma. It's kind of an interesting dilemma. I, I think I want to draw that just a second. Um, all right. So you can implement more features and make the language more comfortable to use, but the more complex you make the language, the more difficult it is to re-implement the language in itself. If you don't implement too many features, right? If you don't implement too many features, you end up with a simpler language, but you end up re-implementing a simpler language as well, right? So you, you kind of need to find the middle ground of the amount of features you want to have if you want to do a self-hosting, right? And I want to implement like a minimal language that is self-hosting language. Uh, for the sake of being self-hosted, because I never implemented self-hosted language before. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, a paradox. It, it kind of feels like implementing a quine in some sense, right? So a quine is a program that prints itself, right? So if you try to print itself, well, the, you go sort of into like an infinite recursion, so to speak. Um, right. Anyways. Um, so this is the duplication and <clears throat> so where is the star? So this is a 42. <sighs> okay, so and what I need to do, I probably need to go to the memory 30. Uh, right, so the size of the buffer is going to be 30. And uh, I add this entire thing and I add 48. So here is the address and here is the 48 and I save it here. Uh, right, I save it here. Uh, otherwise, uh, I need to do... Uh, mem30 plus 48. Uh, actually, in 48, where is the space? Uh, space is 32. Uh, and there we go. Uh, and then I need to write a syscall. Here is an interesting thing. I think I can extract this thing outside of the loop. Um, I think it should be possible to do that. All right, so this is going to be something like this. Uh -huh. uh, uh, no, 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 you cannot do that because you're... Okay, so you're duplicating the current uh, thing in here. So you can't just do that, unfortunately. Anyway. Um, asterisk is 42. Oh, yeah, it is. It's not 48, it's zero. Okay, thank you. Uh, 42. Cool. Um, so now I need to do a syscall. So for the syscall, we start with a counter, right? So the counter is one. Then we start with a buffer. So this is going to be mem30 plus. This is where it's located. And then we are doing um, the output. The output is standard output and then we do syscall3 right so that's pretty pog not gonna lie uh to okay so and that should just you know print one line but the, at the end of that line right at the end of that line what we want to do is to print a new line so this is going to be a uh, mem30 plus uh new line new line new line uh i think it's um 
I think it's a 10. Yeah, so it's, it's a 10. Uh, two, 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 10, like this. And then uh, we're going to print that single character in here. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, we need to increment uh, this plus one, right? Because we're incrementing this thing. And at the end of this loop, we have two, um, two characters. We have two characters at the top of the stack. So we have to do drop, drop. Uh, and that should be fine, I think. I think that should be fine. So if I try to simulate this entire thing, should it work? It does not work. Unknown file descriptor uh, FD. Huh. Oh yeah, I know why, because I forgot the, the number of the syscall. Oh shit, fuck. Okay. That didn't work well. Uh, I wonder why. Mm -mm. I wonder why, I wonder why. Um, does making a compiler mean you're making a new programming language? Not necessarily, but in my specific case, I do make a programming language, a new programming language. Um, okay, so that's really strange. So what is wrong in here? Well, that, I duplicate the current thing and I... Uh, add this to the memory and I actually read it. I think uh -huh, I think I made a fucky wacky. I supposed to write it into the memory So it's supposed to be a dot Right, this is supposed to be a dot and this is supposed to be a dot uh, And I think that should do the trick unknown file descriptor uh, count memory um, That one and why does it say that it's a known file descriptor? Is that because I think std out, isn't it zero? Isn't it just zero? Ah, yeah, I, I forgot to put it here. There we go. All right, it printed some. Sp I think it did it. I think it did it. Uh, so this is the spaces. So we can try to put something in the beginning of the buffer or maybe like seed it the same way we did it for the for the C program. So basically memory uh, 28 plus and what we want to put in there, we want to put one in here and just like save that. So basically we seed in it. And uh, if I take a look at what we've got, just works. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is this so easy? Wait, wait a fucking second. Why is this so fucking easy to implement? I don't understand. Like, the, the final code is not more complex than a C version, if you know what I'm talking about. So this is the equivalent loop. Okay, so here is the uh, equivalent in C. This is how it looks like, literally. This is equivalent in C. It's like more complex, but it's not that much complex. Um, if you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. That's kind of strange. Like, And implementing such language wasn't even difficult. Yeah, stack-based is actually really great. Like, I don't know why more people don't program like this, because it's actually super easy to implement and you get as powerful of a system as like an infix uh, system. Uh, I don't know something probably some, something cultural, but we, we can already print the the generation. We can co compute the next generation, but we can already print the generation, which is which is great. Mm, so it's pretty cool, I guess. Um, so now we probably need to organize this thing. Uh, so the question is, where we're we gonna be storing the pattern? So that's the good question. Where are we going to store the pattern? We can try to store the pattern in the same place as we stored the character, right? So this is one of the things we can do. We can store the pattern here, or we can store the pattern uh, on the stack. We can store it there or on the stack, but I don't know. Uh, we'll probably have to implement a lot of operations. Uh, one of the things we need to implement in here, right? We need to implement shift. Right, we need to implement shifts uh, or and end. 
So that's the things we need to implement. We need to implement at least like three of these things. And once we implemented them, I think we should be able to implement the entire algorithm in here. So should we go ahead and do that? I think we should go ahead and do that. <laughs> Is your program Turing complete? Uh, we're about to find out. We're about to find out if it is. Alrighty, so we need to implement a couple of new operations. So the first one is going to be, I, su I suppose, shift left. Um, so let's take a look. So we have both shift left and shift right. So we need at least like four of them. Um, so let's do it like this. And to the two. Mm -hmm. So, uh, stack manipulation, comparison, arithmetics. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick something like bit uh, wise uh, in here, right? So we're gonna have a bit wise operation. So the first operation we're gonna have is um, shift to the right, or maybe we should call it uh, SHR. Uh, does anyone know how sh like bit shift is called in fourth? So uh, lately I actually started to like slowly read the fourth standard. So maybe we can download the fourth standard and just see uh, how it is called there. Do we have any uh, you know professional um, professional fourth developers in the chat who can tell me? So this is not a fourth standard. Uh, I think it's yeah. yeah. So there, there was a PDF that you could download. I do remember that. Download. Uh, you can be part of it, sign up, or sit back and watch it on Twitch. So there's a Euro fourth conference. It's actually... Oh, okay, it's already too late. But they were streaming, like... That's very interesting. So they were, they were streaming that on Twitch. Do you guys know that? Did anyone know that there was like a fourth conference on Twitch and stuff like that? I didn't know that. Holy shit. It's actually super cool. Hmm. Are they streaming right now? Maybe I should actually follow them. Ah. Uh, Fother. Who's Fother? Uh, so you're a fourth conference. Okay. So I'm going to just go to the chat. And... Uh, which is so slow. I just want to follow them. There we go. I'm going to be following them. All right, cool. Uh, so where can I download the standard? Okay, I can. Here is the PDF. I just wanted to download the PDF. Uh, PCN FM. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, okay. So let's actually go here, and it's going to be documents. And I'm gonna just download the entire thing. And I'm able to follow from through third party apps. Hmm. It's really strange. Uh, new PDF. Um, okay, so here's the standard of fourth. And as far as I know, there is like a list of uh, all of the words, alphabetical list of words. Um, so maybe there is a shift somewhere there. Uh, shift. Uh, so there is an L shift, right? They call it L shift. Uh, to, to perform a logical left shift of U bits places. So the fourth itself calls it just L shift. Uh, so, but we are not really trying to re-implement fourth, if you know what I'm talking about. So we're only using fourth as an inspiration. So you you know what I want to do? Uh, maybe I want to. I need to decide on the color of the bike shed. So what we, what's going to be the color of the bike shed? Uh, I think I'm going to stick with SHR, SHL, right? So this is going to be this, SHL, SHR. Um, so, and... Mm -mm -mm. Shift left, shift right. And I need to decide on uh, things like uh, beat or and byte or so uh, I could use or but I would probably plan for the logical or and for the logical and right so I need to uh, indicate that it's a bit so maybe for bitwise or it's gonna be bore and band so I think this is actually pretty cool um, 
Mm -mm. So I think this is actually pretty cool. Shift, uh, shift right, shift left, beat or and beat and bore and band. Um, mm -mm. Mm. Hello, how's language coming? It's it's like Billy Harrington. It's fucking coming. I see you getting forth, trying to learn to to make uh, Perth better. Yeah, I'm using forth as an inspiration primarily. Uh, would there be a reason to flip a byte? Uh, yes, uh, there is a lot of reasons to flip a byte, to be fair. Mm, 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 two, 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 two. Okay. So, mm, so I don't really know how to explain, but the main idea for this entire thing is going to be, uh, so A, pop, right, so then B pop and I suppose we're gonna push back uh, A slash B right A is the first one and that means if you want to shift something by uh, that amount um, you would do 31 and just shift and that should work okay so this is gonna be shift shift right I'm sorry this is a shift left right like this uh, by the way, in Python, uh, can I do it like that? Okay, so in Python, it's still like literally shift. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to get into the hab habit of, uh, you know, documenting first the operation that I add and then adding them. Uh, right, so then I have a full documentation of what's supported and what's not. Right, it's always nice to have, especially for if people want to see what, what's in the language. Uh, you have a reference essentially you have essentially a reference okay so if I do something like this uh, seems to be working um, a pop uh, B pop uh, push a B and band mm, pop B pop uh, push a B there we go. So this is what we got. Mm, DDD documentation driven development. As far as I know, DDD traditionally stands for domain driven development, isn't it? So. Mm -mm. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, all right. So do I want to put any documentation in here? I, I don't think so. Um, so the next thing I want to do, maybe, uh, I want to add some tests, right? So we have a bunch of tests in here, like for arithmetics. Actually, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not sure how much of this stuff is needed. Uh, but the first one is a stack, then comparison, then arithmetics. Uh, so after arithmetics, we're going to have like a bitwise. Um, so I have like a numbering system here, and I'm realizing that it's kind of dumb. Uh, so I want to get rid of it. But I think it's too late, so I'm gonna do 0, 06 uh, bitwise, uh, and this is gonna be port. And for each of this thing, I'm gonna create like some tests, uh, if you don't mind, right? So we're gonna have two, um, um, three, and we're gonna shift to the left, right? So this is the first thing. And then after that, maybe I wanna dump the final result just to see. Uh, so then I'm gonna do 128, 24, right, and uh, I don't know, maybe 32, and basically shift it to the right, and also dump the entire thing, uh, right. So shift left, uh, shift right, then uh, beat or, um, so it's gonna be one, two, bore, dump. Mm -mm -mm -mm. and then beat end and this one is interesting because a one two band should be equal to zero right it should be equal to zero uh so this is going to be like eight and so on and so forth so this is a bunch of tests in here mm. is this kind of a polish notation yes it is kind of a polish notation because we're uh inspired by fourth right so you can find more information about this kind of stuff in yeah, yeah thank you thank you so much for issuing the link um okay so let me let me see if i try to run or simulate that test uh right so it's gonna be zero six bitwise as you can see we have unknown word uh shl 
right? So this is a SHL word. We, we don't know anything about it. So we're going to go into the port and uh, we're going to start adding that stuff. Mm, maybe we're going to add everything at once. Um, so this is this stuff in here, dump equal op shift right, uh, shift right, shift left, uh, bore, and band. Okay, so that will break the code in all sorts of places. And we'll have to add uh, the parsing for it. So we added four of them, so this is going to be 29. Um, and let me see where I can add all of that. So this is equal, uh-huh, uh, so I'm going to add it somewhere maybe here. Shift right, uh, shift left, um, bore, uh, and band. So I'm basically implementing all of them at once. Uh, okay, so here cross-reference in the blocks, so it doesn't affect any blocks, I can just move on. And here is the implementation in the simulation. Okay, that's cool. Uh, first one I need to implement, uh, shift right. Uh, so that looks all right. Uh, two, 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 two. So in the implementation, um, in the implementation, uh-huh, uh-huh, so this is the first one and we're shifting it to the right. Okay, so this is going to be straight up like this. So this is a shift right, then uh, we have shift left. So this is a shift left and then bore. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to actually cast it to in, but I do that in just in case. At any point I can just remove that if it's not, not level one. Uh, okay, I think we implemented everything, so that should be supported now. Uh, I only need to update this entire thing. And okay, so let's take a look at the final results and see if they look reasonable to some extent. Um, so that doesn't particularly look reasonable. I think that there's too much output and I'm not really sure why. Um, so there should be only four elements in here and for some reason we have uh, eight of them. Um, oh yeah, okay, so I forgot to change to dump. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, to, 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 in the parsing, right? Somewhere in the parsing. Uh, to, 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 to. Uh, a switcher, bore... Ah, okay, I see. Okay. Uh, so this, this is what you get for copy-pasting, by the way. This is the danger of the copy paste. Okay, so we got something and this is completely incorrect. Uh, I can already see that. <laughs> uh, okay, let me, let, me, let me see, kind of. Uh, because when I shift one three times, I would expect it to be eight, but for some reason it's six, if you know what I'm talking about. That's kind of sus. So that means the order of the arguments is kind of like uh, fucked up. Right. <laughs> the order of the arguments is fucked up, uh, but I would expect it to be like this because I wanted to be basically you mentally put this thing in here and it just acts like uh, you would you would expect it. Uh, so that means so H R uh, like this. Okay, so the first one has to be the one that we're using. Okay, so it has to be something like this. It has to be inversed. And in the readme, did I? No, it's actually not inversed, right? So it has to be like this. It has to be like this, like everywhere. Uh, for or and and, it doesn't really matter, uh, but I'm gonna inverse it anyway. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. It's still six. What the fuck? Uh, why is it still six? Uh, am I crazy? Ah, yes, I am crazy. I'm just like using it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Shift left. Uh, so the first one is the one that you're moving. The second one. Aha. Uh, Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, I think I'm getting tired. Finally. Holy shit. Okay. So eight, four, three, and zero. Uh, I think this looks reasonable. I think. 
Right, if we can take a look at this stuff one more time. Uh, right. So one to the, uh, two to the power of three is eight. That looks fine. 32 is essentially two to the power of five, right? And you subtract three, you get two to the power of two and two to the power of two is four. Looks correct to me. So one is one in uh, binary notation, two is one zero in binary notation. If you combine them together, you get one one, which is three. So this looks correct. Uh, the same thing and they cancel out because ones match with the zeros and you get zero. So all of that seems to be correct. So this is the correct output. And this is what you would expect from these operations, right? So looks reasonable to me. So uh, also let me double check the documentation. So everything seems to be all right. And uh, the thing I'm gonna do, uh, right? I'm gonna do tests uh, record, right? So this entire thing will basically remember uh, what is the correct output? Uh, what is the expected output for the bitwise? You see, we created bitwise uh, dot porth, and on top of that, we have bitwise dot txt. So basically, now in this file, it keeps everything that is expected, right? And then it will use this file in uh, in testing, right? So, and if something changes, or it will basically fail uh, the entire like build and whatnot. Right, but this is not enough uh, because we only implemented that for the simulation. We also need to implement this thing for the compilation, right? So, and for the compilation, we'll have to actually generate assembly instructions for these things. And I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> so we'll have to look up how you do these like binary operations and whatnot. Uh, okay, so 25, uh, this one is gonna be rather interesting, not gonna lie. Uh, op uh, type equal op shr uh, out right uh -huh. like so uh, and maybe i can also assert that this entire thing is not implemented just in case uh, so this is going to be the left left this one is going to be the bore bore and this one is going to be the band. Um, band. So the first thing we need to do, I'm pretty sure, uh, we'll need to pop uh, Rex and RBX. But I'm not 100% sure because it depends on what the uh, shipped uh, instruction is x86-64. x86-64 x86, shift right uh, because I literally don't know. Um, so shift and rotate. Oh! They literally call SHR and SHL. There's also SAR and SAL. Oh, this is probably depending on whether it's signed or uns. Holy shit, I didn't think about that. Do I want to care about signed, unsigned shift right now? <laughs> I really don't want to care about that. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, anyway. So, let me see. Uh, this is too much text. Uh, so in a logical shift instruction, also referred as unsigned shift, the bits that uh, slide of the end disappear, except for the um, the right one, uh, arithmetical shift versus logical one. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, this is going to be logical one for now. Um, and the spaces are always filled with zeros. Logical shift are best used f uh, with unsigned numbers. Uh, do, 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 do. So the Intel syntax uh, DST logical shift to the right by SRC bits. Okay, that looks nice. So shift DST by uh -huh. So this is gonna be pop rex, right? So we have pop rex and pop rbx. Then uh, we need to do shr. And the destination in our case, we already established that in the simulation. OPASHR. So the destination is B. That means I need to do RBX Rex. Uh, and after that, I need to push it back. Right. I push RBX back. Surprisingly, the assembly implementation is kind of similar to the uh, to the simulation. So that's pretty cool, <laughs> right? Uh, we even use the same names like Rax, RBX, AB, and yeah, that, that's pretty straightforward. Um, okay, so shift left, I'm pretty sure shift left is gonna be the same shit. Uh, so I'm gonna just like put it like this. 
and this is going to be shift left. Okay, all right, so we already implemented compilation for two or for two new operations. So bore, um, let's see, uh, to, to, to shield double precision shift. Uh, so the names of double precision somewhat misleading hands, they are listed in extended shifts. Uh, they are available for use with 1632. Ah, okay, so it's like a legacy stuff. Okay, no, nobody cares about that. Um, so uh, logical or uh, inclusive or logical inclusive or. Mm -mm. Do, 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 do. So operation destination or SRC. I guess. Uh huh. So it's literally called or, isn't it? I think it's literally called or. So if I go to uh, here, right, and uh, switch to NASM mode, do you have or? Okay, it highlights or. Do you have and? It highlights and. I would presume that maybe or and and could be implemented similarly. Um, so I can only assume. It would be actually kind of cool if the, the entire implementation is just like that. Uh, right, so this is going to be or. Can I just copy paste it as well? <laughs> uh, that would be kind of cool if I could copy paste it. So this, and this is a band. All right, so is, the, is that it? Is that it? Can I compile the entire thing? Uh, okay, so if I go to update my thing in here. Uh, all right, so instruction expected. Um, oh, it's not band, I'm sorry. Um, um, so it has to be end. Uh, invalid combination of op code and operands. Okay, that's cool. Um, it's very interesting. So, really, uh, two, 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 shift left. So it just doesn't work like that. Uh, is that because you cannot use like two things in here? So let's go back. I wonder shift and rotate. So destination. I'm afraid that there is no variant of shift left and shift right with two registers. Like I'm really, really afraid that that is the case. So if I go to shift left, do we have? Uh, yeah, yeah. So did you mean I mean I meant that? Uh, register memory. Uh, CL. What is the CL? Hello, deep singularity. Hello, hello. Uh, two, 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 multiple by CL times. What is the CL? I'm not sure what is the CL. Uh, shifts the bit in the first operand uh, and the left to right number of operands. Uh, bits should be on the destination operand bound the flags at the end. Destination operand can be uh, a register of memory cache and the count operand can be immediate value or CL reg register. Uh, okay, what is a CL register? Is that like literally the name of the register? Oh, okay, so it's... Okay, I see, I see. For some reason... Like, I didn't expect it to be called like that. I thought maybe it's a category of register. Okay, so I see. So I have to put that into RCX and stuff like that. So you can't shift more than 255 time, uh, like bits, which is, like, I guess, fine because you don't really need to shift that far anyway, right? So 255 is already bigger than 64, right? And 64, like, after that, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, all right. So I just didn't expect that you are given such a small amount to shift. I was born for the deal and seal register somehow. Well, I me too because I don't know what what, what are those registers. Uh, all right. So I suppose what I have to do in here. Okay, I, I guess we'll learn something. Um, uh, when I do SHL and SHR, right, instead of Rex, I have to do RCX. Right, I have to do RCX and just hope that the lower bit of uh, RCX will contain the right value, uh, right? So this is gonna be that, and because of that, I'll have to put CL in here, 
uh, right? Ah, oh, fuck, it's not, it's not the right thing, I'm doing the wrong thing. Ah, uh, shit, fuck, damn. Uh, so this is RCX, uh, CL, uh, RCX, CL. Hopefully that will... Uh, okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, of course. Um, so, yeah. That thing compiles at least now. That thing at least compiles. So let's try to run it as well and see if it produces... It produces the same output. So as you can see... Uh, it produces the same output as the simulation, right? So, yep, we successfully implemented that. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, I wonder if I can run the tests uh, and just, like, see if there's no discrepancy between these things. And if I take a look at 06 bitwise, as you can see, there's no uh, discrepancy in here. We can try to introduce some discrepancy just to see uh, that something is incorrect. For example, for SHL, we can replace it with R, and obviously that is incorrect, and just see if our test will catch that. And they indeed uh, like uh, catch that. Uh, so, yeah, unexpected compilation output. So expected that thing, but the actual was this thing. Uh, right, so that's pretty cool. So our tests actually catch this kind of stuff. All right, we implemented four new operations that we can use for rule 110. And that is pretty exciting. That is in fact pretty exciting. Uh, so let's do what? Let's do a committee committee and maybe even a pushy pushy. What do we need? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So this is gonna be TXT, this is gonna be Porth. Uh, I recently actually set up a CI, continuous integration, right? So I run this test on CI. And one thing I want to do, I think I'm going to create a separate branch and make a pull request so it double checks everything. Uh, so rule uh, 110. So this is going to be the new branch. And uh, let's do a committee committee. Mm. Implement uh, four new operations. Uh, SHR, SHL, BOR, uh, BAND. Um, uh, is it logical? I think it's a... I don't remember what... Yeah, I think it's a logical shift. Logical shift right. Uh, logical uh, shift left. Uh, bitwise or bitwise uh, and. Right, so that's basically the things we implement and I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Alrighty, so we have everything um, for to implement this thing. We have everything to implement that stuff. So the question is, um, I'll need to organize this loop. So this is some sort of like a for loop, right? This is some sort of a for loop and oh boy. Um, that means I need two elements on top of the stack. Right, I have two elements on top of the stack, and I also need to keep a pattern somewhere. The question is, do I want to keep the pattern on the stack along with like counter and upper value, or do I want to keep it somewhere else? To be fair, I know uh, the board, uh, like the upper value. So I can actually re-implement this entire loop slightly differently. Um, let me let me see. So here is rule one one oh full fourth. So I implemented this style of loop, right? While to dupe less uh, do duplicate print one plus and then I ended everything. Right, and if I do fourth simulation full fourth. Um, so it did a strange thing. It's actually dumb. There we go. So this is this this is the style of loop. So this style of loop makes sense when you want to know this value at runtime. But I kind of know it at compile time. If I hard code it like so, uh, what I can do essentially, I can do thirty. I can actually do dupe thirty and maybe like move it to the uh, to the different thing uh, and yeah so that way I only maintain one element on the stack uh, which means I have some space for the pattern I can keep uh, the pattern on the stack as well so that sounds 
pretty reasonable, I would say. Mm. So this is how we can organize that loop. And we can reorganize other loops like this as well. So this could be reorganized like that. Um, this could be reorganized like that. There's no reason to, to make it like that. Maybe I can do it right away. So it's going to be this dupe 30 less, right? Uh, and it's going to be like a drop in here. This is going to be zero dupe 30 uh, less. And that will require a single drop in here as well. Uh, so, yep, that's actually a little bit easier. Mm. Okay, so if I try to uh, run the entire thing... Uh, okay, so that didn't break anything. This is actually nice. Uh, that didn't break anything. And can we compile the entire thing? And also it compiles. Cool. <sighs> All right. So let's uh, go. Mm. So we're going to be iterating starting from 1 while dupe 28 less do and this is going to be the end so this is the second loop in here this is the second loop and where are we going to have a pattern where are we going to have a pattern so first i want to read the first element from the board right so this is going to be the first element from the board uh, then I want to shift it by one to the left and read the second one and also or it. Okay, let's try to uh, code this thing. So this is essentially just memory. We read that thing and we have the character on top of the stack. Then I do one and I shift it to the left. Right, so that gives me uh, this value. Right, so that gives me this value. Then I do memory um, one plus, so this is the next one, and I read it, right? So then I read it like that. Uh, and I don't really need to shift the entire thing, right? So the only thing I need to do, I need to just uh, do bore. And there we go, so this is equivalent of uh, this stuff. Uh, so I think to, to be able to separate the comments, I'm going to do something like this. Uh, okay, so we're going to use the C as a highlighting. I can also use Pascal mode, I suppose. Uh, yeah, let's use Pascal mode because it also highlights end as well. Um, all right. So that gives me the pattern. Uh, and shift left, shift right. So this is a bore and we start the iteration. All right, and this is going to be plus one. So after that, after the loop, I need to drop the index and I also need to drop the pattern, right? So I drop two values and then we continue uh, iterating over and over again. Um, okay, so this is just the pattern. Uh, so we're almost there, by the way, we're almost there. So then uh, I need to sort of repeat the entire thing somehow. Uh, I need to repeat the entire thing. Uh huh. So at here. Mm. So here's the stack. I have a pattern and an index, right? So what I need to do, I need to get the pattern. So I'm gonna do swap. Swapping this entire thing puts the pattern in here, right? So it uh, puts it in here. The next thing I want to do, I want to shift it by one to the left, right? So as you can see, I'm shifted uh, to the left by one. So it's going to be one uh, SHL. There we go. So we have pattern uh, shifted by one. All right. So this is what we got. Then I need to read the board J plus one, right? So that means I need to uh, swap the index back. Right, I need to swap the index back, so this is going to be swap. Uh, then I need to duplicate that index, uh, that gives me the index. Uh, then I need to get a memory by that index, so I put a memory in here and I sum it up, so that results in this entire thing, right, that results in this entire thing. And I think we're already starting to get a problem in here, because if I try to read the memory uh, from here, right, here is the character, and I already lost the pattern, 
Right, I already lost the pattern. I cannot do anything uh, with this entire thing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I need to sort of get this entire thing, like swap these two elements, right, somehow. And that's already kind of a problem. It's already kind of a problem. So I need to reorganize this entire stuff somehow. Otherwise, I won't be able to do that. Mm, hello, hello everyone. How are you guys doing? <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm a little bit tired. So I'm going to make a small break. And after the break, we're going to continue doing this thing. Um, all right. So um, let's continue. Um, so I think the storing pattern on the stack was rather a bad idea. Or maybe we can still salvage it uh, by maybe rearranging some of the operations. Maybe we'll be able to do that. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> so I can duplicate some stuff. I can duplicate indices. Uh, I don't think it is possible unless we implement some operations from fourth i, I kind of want to implement operations from fourth like stack operation from fourth because they were designed by people who used fourth for quite some time so they figured out what are the most like common operations that you want to do in a stack based language so um when i follow the fourth standard i'm specifically following it for the stack operations right because i think that particular part of the language is developed well so there's there are some things that i would like to change about fourth specifically i would like my language to be statically typed uh, because fourth as far as I know it's more of like a dynamically typed thingy right but mine I want it to be like statically typed and verified just like WebAssembly uh, so we'll see so WebAssembly has a very interesting step of verification which like um, checks that you can perform operations that you're trying to perform right um all right so what i wanted to do i wanted to take a look at the standard of fourth and just like see what kind of stack operations that we can find useful and just implement them uh so new pdf and let me take a look at the stuff uh so where is the uh alphabetical list of words mm, so there's a two dupe uh maybe you can use to dupe actually if you think about it well yeah i could have just used to dupe could i could i not probably not so there's two over um two over copy cell pair one two to the top okay so this is a two over so there is probably a thing called over then uh, right, so let me find uh -huh. uh, two, two, two. If there is a two over, there must be one over, and that could be a thing that we want to have. That might be the thing that we want to have. So over, it's not over till it's over. There is such thing as over. So is a bit by bit inclusive or of x and. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm reading the wrong thing. Uh, place a copy of X1 on top of the stack. Okay, so it's like over. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I know that you're allergic to cringe. I didn't mean to. Mm. Um, <clears throat> All right, anyway. Um, so. Uh, where is my stuff? Where is my stuff? Uh, so we have pattern and pattern and an index, All right? So I swap this thing. Uh, so here's the pattern. Then I put this, and then I do shift left, All right? So this is a shift left, and there we go. Uh, after that, the thing I want to do. I'm swapping this back. Um, well, so instead of swap, I can do over, uh, right? And that will give me an index, right? After that, we want to put memory. Um, we don't even need to duplicate. We can just do over. Uh, then we do plus, uh, right? Then we do plus, um, and then 
this entire stuff gives us the character, the, essentially the cell. Okay, this is actually perfect. This is actually absolutely perfect because now uh, the thing I want to do, right, uh, is essentially just or this entire thing together. Perfect, this is precisely what I was talking about. They perfected the set uh, of the data stack operation uh, over the years, right? Because they've been programming that language. And that's why I'm trying to you know, like reinvent stack operations, because I know that people who uh, made fours, they actually thought the set of stack operations through really, really well. Um, so that's pretty cool. But after I um, shifted to the right by one, I forgot that I need to or it with seven, right? I need to or it with seven. So let's actually do it like this. Uh, two, 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 two. So this is a shift left, uh, right? So this is a shift left. Um, and I want to put seven, 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 seven. And it's not really or, it's a band. Right, and that's I think is going to be essentially seven uh, and cool. Then we copy the index, add memory, right, and memory plus. Then we read the cell, right, read the cell, and then uh, I do bore, which basically combines this entire stuff. And there we go. Here is the pattern. Here is our pattern. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is more of like a more like a new pattern, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so maybe we can even rename it to like a new pattern. So here it is. So it's just like a shortcut for for the new pattern in here. Uh, the next thing we want to do, all right, we want to look up the new thing by that pattern. So essentially, um, I need to push one one zero. Oh, Right, and that pushes 110 like this. Uh, it pushes 110 like this. And the next thing I want to do, I want to do over. Over is such a perfect operation. Yeah, this is precisely what I want to do. I do over, right? I do over. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Right, I do over. That copies the pattern in here. And then I do SHR. Right, I do SHR. Uh, and that makes it like this, okay. And then I need to put uh, one in here and do band. And that will turn it into like that. So this is uh, the new cell that I need to save into the board, right? So I think I need to open like two things together. So here is the stack that I'm maintaining, here is the uh, reference, and here is the actual implementation. Okay. Uh, and now, right, I need to save that into the board. So that means I need to get the index somehow. I need to get the index somehow, and we lost the index. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. Damn. <laughs> <sighs> ah, so everything is so complicated. Yeah, we lost the index. <clears throat> so maybe we want to start over. Maybe we want to start over because, like, there's no way I can get the index from here. Like, there's no way I can do that. Shit. Mm, so maybe if we go back, right, if we go back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what I want to do here is essentially... Maybe I want to duplicate these two things, right? I want to duplicate these two things. Uh, and that way I do two dupe, right? I do two dupe and that gives me this stuff, right? And after that, I push uh, the Antonio. Thank you so much for uh, seven months of tier one subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and welcome to Epic Dupe Club. Uh, all right. So this is what we have. And 
now, I suppose. Um, also, I think I fucked up uh, because this is supposed to be uh, memory plus and one plus, right? So because we're taking J plus one, right? So uh, over, we're copying the index over memory plus one plus, and only then we do uh, the bore on that thing. Anyway, so this is the new pattern, and I need to push uh, 110 in here. 11. I think I'm starting to understand why it is called 110. Uh, I think I'm starting to understand. Anyway, so after that, I need to swap these two things, right? We're swapping it and making it like that. Then we need to do shift right, which makes it like so, right? So this is a shift right. Uh, after that, we do uh, one band, uh, one end. So this is what we have. And that's pretty cool. So this is the new value. After that, uh, we need to swap the entire thing. So that will give us uh, this index. Then I do memory plus, uh, memory plus, like so. Uh, and this is essentially the address where we have to write this entire thing. So we swap it back. Uh, we swap it back uh, like so and writing into there right and we end up in here so and after that I swap the new pattern back right and then we're gonna have uh, one plus so index plus one and we repeat the cycle we repeat the cycle. So I encoded this monstrosity in here. And it's actually not that more complex, right? It's kind of difficult to follow through, but it's not that much complex, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, right, so that looks fine, but I would like to actually go through the entire thing one more time, just in case, um, right? Just to ensure that everything's fine, if you know what I'm talking about, okay? So let's go ahead and just like uh, go through the entire stuff. Mm, okay. Uh, two, 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 two. So first we we push memory. So we're, we're starting from here. So we have memory. Then we read a uh, cell from the memory. Then we push one, and we ship that cell. Right. So it's a uh, it's more of a, like a memory zero. Right. Uh, it's more like a memory zero. So this is the first element that we've got. Then we push mem1 uh, plus 1 and we're reading from it and we get mem memory1 and we or this entire stuff. And this becomes our pattern, right? So this looks correct. Then we push 1 and that becomes our index, right? And we constantly check it. We duplicate the index, right? We uh, check that it's less than 28. And if it's, uh, if it's greater or equal, that means we're gonna stop the entire thing. Okay, so here we swap this entire thing. We put uh, one and shift left, right? So this is a shift left. Is it shift left in the original one? It is in fact shift left, okay. Then I put seven and I do this thing. Uh, there we go. After that, I copy index over here. I add the memory, I add one, then I read a memory uh, essentially by that index. So this is a memory plus one, and I do or uh, between those things, right? And this becomes my new pattern. Okay, cool. So then I duplicate these two things, one, one, all, swap this stuff around, uh, shift right, then one and end. Uh, right, and that's the um, the new the next value. Then I swap this stuff around one more time. Uh, plus memory. Uh, uh huh. Plus memory. Then swap this stuff back, and essentially I save this value into this address, like so. And then I swap these two things, and the cycle repeats. Uh, and essentially also index is going to be plus one. Okay, so that should be it.
So I went through all the operations and they seem to be reasonable. Uh, the only problem is that we don't have over, right? <laughs> so, uh, hello, MK, MXKWL, hello, hello. So yeah, everything seems to be reasonable. Uh, and this is how it looks in Porth, right? So this is the entire implementation in Porth. And this is the impl entire implementation in C. Not that much complex for a, such a low level language. Um, so some of this stuff, it's even thinner, right? So some of these things could be probably put on the, on the same line and you could, yeah, so you can stretch it up, but I just decided to not to stretch it up. Um, so it's not that much more complex. Um, mm -mm, mm, so, hi, just wanted to ask how is it called when you write define something implementation when using some header only library? So, I suppose what you're referring to, uh, Craftwork, is um, a trend started by Sean Barrett in his STB libraries. I think I pronounced his name correctly, just a second. Uh, Sean Barrett, right. So, he started that trend in his STB libraries, and essentially, the idea of that thing is that uh, a header-only library acts like both header and uh, a C file, right? And essentially, when you include that header, it by default acts like a header. And if you want it to also act like a C file, you have to define uh, something implementation in front of it. I'm not sure if this technique has any name. Right, and this technique, as far as I know, it's described in docs in here, so STB how to, right, so define implementation. Use a symbol like the above to control creating the implementation. I use a far less clear name in my first blah blah blah. Include a header on the section with the header file guards and inclusion for all of the files, but only guard the implementation with a library implementation. Right, so I don't think there is a name for that, right, so the first instance of mentioning this technique I saw is in this specific section. Um, I don't know. So maybe like define like implementation guard or something. I don't think there is any name for this kind of stuff. But yeah. So I think it was popularized by Sean Barrett. Uh, okay, I'm gonna also put this entire thing in the description. Uh, so stb how to txt. Um, Mm -hmm. All right, so let's try to run this entire thing. I'm a little bit nervous because what if I fucked up something? Um, well, I don't even know how to troubleshoot this entire thing. <laughs> we don't really have a debugger for this entire stuff. And uh, so let's see. Uh, I know word over. Okay, so we also need to implement over, of course. I'm, I'm using non-existing word, of course. Uh, to, 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 to. So let's go ahead and do it like that. So where is the stack operations? Where is the stack? Uh, comparison, stack manipulations, swap uh -huh. over. Um, can I just use like place a copy of uh, on top of the stack? This is such a cool notation. Maybe I should start using this notation as well, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm using slightly different notation. So A, pop, uh, B, so this is the top, then uh, pop B, right? Then I push kind of B back and A back and also A. Uh, and also B, yeah, there we go. So this is the top, this is thing below the top. I push it back, I push A back, and I push this thing on top, I think. Okay, so this is basically the, the implementation. Mm. Mm. All right, so this is gonna be over. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, just implement this entire operation. So uh, there's a dump band um, mm, 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 to dupe swap drop op over uh, i alter. There we go. Um, so maybe it also makes sense to add it right away to the stack uh, stack tests. Uh, right. So yeah. 
I didn't have a way to print a line, a separation line in the output. So I printed like one, 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 one. And this is my separation line in the output, at least for now, right? At least for now. All right, 6942, uh, over and um, dump, right? Over and dump, and then I can do drop, drop. Maybe it doesn't even matter, right? So essentially it should print 69, right? Because it copies uh, 69 over and just dumps it, okay? So uh, let's go and I'm gonna do simulate uh, tests. Uh, zero one stack port. All right, so it complains about this thing. Let's do 30. Let's find the place where um, uh, where we need to parse this entire thing. So we have swap and drop. And this one is going to be over. And this one is going to be over. Okay, so here is another one. Nothing is required to be changed in here. Uh huh, and this is the simulation. The simulation of our nation. Where is the drop? Okay. Uh, OP um, type OP over uh, A stack pop B stack pop uh, stack push B uh, A Okay, and then we also implement plus one. Uh, Loving this is called implementation, by the way. <laughs> Which one, simulation or compilation? So in simulation, we literally simulate specific things. And in the compilation, uh, uh, yeah, so we have syscall one, two, three, and four, five. <laughs> I mean, it's for now, right? right. So it was like the easiest way to implement for now. Later, we're gonna make it a little bit better. Right, so it's, uh, this entire thing is still proof of concept. Uh, right. Okay, so push, there's no such thing as push. Uh, and let me do append. Uh, there we go, so it's supposed to be 69. Cool. And let me capture the outputs. Right, so record. Uh huh. So, and this is the new expected output for the new test. And let's go ahead and try to to compile the, the entire thing. So it's going to be compile tests zero one stack port and there we go. So it's going to be setting to 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 drop. Okay, L if op type op over out right one two three four over uh, like this. Uh, pop uh, rex rbx push rbx push rex push rbx it again so we do over so it could be uh, probably implemented way uh, more efficient by directly taking the element over the entire thing but optimization is outside of the scope right now um, <clears throat> mm, all right so let's continue Okay, this seems to be compiling, and if I try to run the entire thing, it actually brings a 69. Okay, that's cool. So let's run the tests and confirm that everything is okay. So everything is passing, as far as I can tell, which is cool. Uh, and we have all of the necessary operations to run the rule 110 implementation, and I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not, right? So I never tried it. I went manually. It theoretically should work, but again, we, you never know. Ah, the moment of truth, the culmination of today's stream, right? Will rule 110 work? Uh, let's try to simulate this entire thing and see if it's gonna work. Well, GG's. Porth is officially Turing complete. There we go. At least in the simulation, at least in the simulation, it is Turing complete. Right, so we, we can remove this thing so it looks more like this. Right, and maybe I wanna actually do 28 so it like it's like a perfect uh, triangle and whatnot. 
so it works in a simulation. Let's try to uh, compile it, right? Let's try to compile it. It seems to be compiling. And uh, here we have assembly of rule 110, uh, right? Generated from fourth. And we also have an executable, right? We also have an executable, which we can see that it's, uh, uh, you know, it seems to be working. So that was kind of sus. Wait a second. So there's something sus. Uh, ah. Something is running in here. I don't understand what is running in here. Uh, anyway, so this is rule 110, and there we go. So the compiled version works as well. The compiled version works as well. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't have any ways of obstructing things, right? So it's kind of difficult to increase the amount of elements. Uh, one thing you can do, if you want to have like 100 elements instead of 30. You query replace 30 with 100, right? And you query replace 28 with uh, 98. There we go. So that way, uh, you're going to have uh, 100 elements. Holy shit! Look how slow simulation is. This is the simulation using Python. You can literally see how it prints everything. And it takes 1.5 seconds to actually simulate this entire stuff. Right, so look how slow it is in simulation. But if I try to compile this entire thing, right, uh, it takes 20 milliseconds. It takes, to, like, okay, so up to like 30 milliseconds. So if you compile it into, into native code, it's way faster, like magnitudes. Even though it's kind of slow for this entire thing, because if you take a look at the C version, right? So do we have a C version? Uh, so let's actually put like 100 in here. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, and now if I take a look at the time, yeah, the C version is actually three milliseconds. So we're slower than C, unfortunately, but we don't do any optimizations though, right? So uh, the code that is generated, assembly that is generated is actually pretty dumb. So uh, I think it's forgivable and we are only at the, um, we're only at the early stage of the development, right? So it's 30 times slower than C, but we're gonna work on that and we're gonna improve that in the future. That's for sure, but this entire shit is already Turing complete and I'm super happy about that. Like, holy fucking shit. Uh, so I already prepared the loop uh, for debugging <laughs> the entire thing because I didn't know if it's gonna work first try, but it worked first try. So, and I think I'm proudly going to place a rule 110 into the folder with examples, right? And here is the thing. Uh, so we have uh, Turing complete, right? So I'm gonna remove this part and I'm gonna redirect to examples rule 110 uh, port. Rule 110 port. And officially say that this entire thing is done. Our language is finally Turing complete. It's compiled, native, stake based, just like fourth, and Turing complete. And here is the proof that it is, in fact, Turing complete. So the next thing is going to be statically typed, but I'm not sure if I want to implement statically type, static typing before I made it self hosted. Because again, implementing more features means that implementing uh, this thing in itself. Is going to be more complicated so i think i'm going to first try to go for self-hosting and after we rewrote rewrite rewrite the compiler in itself right we can try to think about static typing similar to a buzz and validation step so yeah uh that's pretty cool okay uh two, 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 two. so we have this thing so this is the port port uh -huh, uh -huh. So we have a, like a bunch of garbage in here that is not really neat. Uh, so here is that. This is Turing complete. Rule 110. For mm, 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 mm. uh, spy stack. And there we go. Implement, implement rule 110 in fourth. Uh, right, I'm gonna push that right into the repo and we're gonna make a pull request. 
Uh, so let me see, it's gonna be sodium fourth. There we go, there we go. So, of course, you can find the source code of this thing in the description if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Twitch, you can find the repo in here. Actually, in, in here, I mean. Mm -mm. Can you elaborate about how you envision functions in Porth? Uh, I don't really have any particular vision, but I want the functions to be compatible with C meaning that uh, whatever function you, you make in port is going to be callable from C and whatever function you have in C is going to be callable from port. So I want to have that for easy uh, reusage of existing libraries because I want to try to use different libraries in port. Specifically, I want to try to write an OpenGL application in port, um, some sort of a simple game that uses GPU and whatnot. So I have plans like that. Uh, how exactly am I going to implement that? I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, I have a couple of ideas, but I'm not sure about any of them. Uh, to, 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 to. Mm, all right. So uh, let's make the uh, pull request uh, to, 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 to implement rule 110 in fourth. And since we have a CI, uh, it should check uh, this stuff on CI, hopefully. Uh, to, to, to 173 changes, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is the entire implementation. I'm really glad that rule 110 actually turned out so simple. Uh, relatively, it could have been more readable, more simple. Mm, leap port, and what it's... Okay, leap port coming anytime soon. Uh, I'm not sure what leap port is supposed to do, to be fair. Um. Mm -mm. All right, so here are all of the changes. Here are all of the changes. And so let's wait for CI. Okay, CI seems to be passing, so I'm going to merge this thing uh, right into the repo, and we're going to delete the branch. So the thing I want to do also, I want to get rid of all of this garbage. Hit clean FDX. Uh, and there we go. So no more garbage. The repo is clean. And here in the examples we have uh, rule 110 uh, implemented. So this is going to be uh, port, compile, and also run examples rule 110 port. And there we go. We have rule 110. All right. So today was a pretty productive stream. Not going to lie. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one, and I see you all next time. I don't know where, I don't know when. Uh, check out uh, the all of this stuff in the description if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Twitch, check out the YouTube channel where I'm going to upload this entire thing. And it is time for me to go. It is time for me to go. So the next time, we're going to try to uh, start implementing uh, self-hosting for this compiler. Right. I want to implement self-hosting for it as early as possible until the compiler becomes too complex uh, and uh, re-implementing it in itself is going to be too painful. Right. We'll see how it will go. We'll see how it will go. Right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Love you all. Mm-hmm.